This is a super difficult question that we've seen from time to time on the SAT. It relates to the idea of the number of solutions for two lines. If we have two lines, they can have one solution. They can hit once if the slopes are different. No solutions, they'll never hit if they're parallel, if the slopes are the same and the y-intercepts are different. And they'll have infinite solutions if everything is... And they'll have infinite solutions if everything is the same, the slope and the y-intercept. And that's because they're the same equation as one another. They would occupy the exact same location on a graph. Now, that infinite solution situation is a little different than the others. Uh, we already saw it earlier on this same math section, but in an infinite solution situation, because the equations are identical, you can kind of see a multiplier between them. So you can see here that 28 divided by 4 is 7, 24 divided by 4 is 6, and 20 divided by 4 is 5. So just by glancing through this, we know that we have a situation of infinite solutions. And just imagine our scenario here. If we had our infinite solutions, what's the answer? Well, whatever the equation is, that's our answer. So imagine this is 2x plus 3. That's the solution. Anything that lies on the line, y equals 2x plus 3, is in the solution. So what's the solution here? Let's go ahead and get one of the equations in the y equals format, and that'll allow us to verbalize the solution a little better. So if we take this top equation and take away 7x from both sides, we'll have 6y is equal to negative 7x plus 5. Divide by 6, and you'll have y is negative 7 over 6x plus 5 over 6. Now, this particular question scenario, it really does seem to be showing up sort of exactly the same each time we see it throughout different SATs. And the real way to be ready is kind of to have seen this situation before and to be remembering what it is you're supposed to do. So for no other reason other than this is what you've been told to do and you remember that that's what you're supposed to do, we're going to go ahead and solve for x in addition to solving for y. So we'll take this equation and we'll take away 6y from both sides. And we'll get 7x is negative 6y plus 5. We can divide by 7 and we'll have x is negative 6 over 7y plus 5 over 7. So now the big kicker on this question is the verbal statement. This, if we think of it as a verbal statement, says the y value is what you get when you multiply x by negative 7 over 6 and then add 5 over 6 to that. And this statement here is saying the x value is what you get when you multiply y by negative 6 over 7 and then add 5 over 7 to that. So one of the answers says one of those two statements. So looking at the answers now, these are all our x values because they're before the comma. And these are all our y values because they're after the comma. And so taking answer choice A as an example, this says that we have some x value. And it says the y value is what you get when, so this is the y value here. The y value is what you get when you multiply that x value by negative 6 over 7. And then you add 5 over 7 to that. And that's not what we wanted. For us, our y value is what we got when we multiplied the x by negative 7 over 6, not negative 6 over 7. So once again, to reiterate, we took the statement for a, and we're realizing that this random letter r, that's just some x value. And what's being said is the y value is what you get when you do these things to that x value. So let's analyze b a little bit. b is saying that the x value is r, and the y value is what you get when you multiply that r by 7 over 6. That's our x value, r. And then add 5 over 6 to that. And that's not what we had when we looked in the y equals format. We had y equals negative 7 over 6x. And this one says y equals positive 7 over 6x. So we went through these two answer choices and explained why they don't match. Answer choice C is kind of something just a little more complicated. I've never really seen that format for this situation, so I'm kind of more willing to ignore it. And now going over to answer choice D, answer choice D is saying that we have some x value, 
right here, and our y value is r. And it's saying that our x value is what we get when we multiply our y value, which is r, by negative 6 over 7. And then we're adding 5 over 7 to that. So does that match our x statement that we had? Negative 6 over 7 y plus 5 over 7? Yes. It's a perfect fit. And so the answer to 20 is D.